start off that circus and get me Jerry Wood? Well, you win. <laughs> Carl, don't you hear the lady? She wants Jerry Wood. Well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> calling all stations, calling all stations for Jerry Wood. Come on, Jerry Wood. Come on, the lady needs Jerry Wood. Or any loss at all. The Lemoyne City Bank closed its doors today at 2 o'clock. Due to embezzlement, a depositor's money estimated at over four and one half million. A warrant has been issued for the I'm arrest dancing of to the Trump tune of several thousand. Really? Who was last oh. seen at the airport entering a plane headed for the border. Police state his arrest is only a matter of hours, as all border authorities have been notified to keep a sharp lookout for him. This bank closing is most disastrous to both the public and the city itself. Jay Trumbull's crossing the border isn't going to spoil this party. You were in that bank, weren't you, Tom? Ma, they never put all your eggs in one basket, Laura. Well, come on, down with poverty. Let's skin the cat and cook the canary. <laughs> and I'll take a wing. <laughs> the cat? It's all the same to you. I think I'll have a drink of the Here you are. Thank That's you. me. <laughs> you know, before that man from the tower dropped in, we were celebrating a wedding. <laughs> yes, yeah, speaking of your bride-to-be, Tom, where is she? Here's to the absent bride. And here's to all absent brides. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, the music's good and the cocktail shaker's full. Come on, this is a party. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, I'm just too happy for words about you and Gypsy, and I know you're going to be perfectly happy in spite of what anyone says or thinks. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll have one of those. No, thanks. Oh, uh, yes, I, I think I'll have one of those, too. Well, how did I get across? Get across what? My act. Did it go over? So you did have all your eggs in one basket. And Jay Trumbull took that basket across the line. Can I help? No, thanks. I've never been on my own before. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. Um, what about Gypsy? The bank closed the doors at 2 o'clock. Gypsy gave me the gate at 3. So she wouldn't go through. That's it. She wouldn't go through. $67. How far will that take me? Well, I don't know. That's where I'm going. Are you sure there isn't anything I can do to help? Yes, go out and entertain that wild-eyed mob. Yes, sir. What did I tell you? Come on, show them something, girls. Show them. There you are. 
before they leave you. Right. Well, you find them and I'll leave them. I did that for a guy once and I got left. Sorry, I mentioned it. Oh, that's all right. It just gives me the right slant on these wrens. A guy's a chump to fall from. They're all the same. Yeah, they're all the same to me. Uh, Was she a blonde? What's the difference? There ain't any. Nice, juicy, hot hamburgers. Nice, juicy, hot hamburgers. It smells pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. How about setting them up? Sorry, I'm kind of rusty on the setting up exercises. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Flat as that? Flat. You and me both. Right over here, folks, meet the staff feet of the Gulf of Mexico. Hey, right over here. We are offering $5 for any You better go before that hamburger smell gets me down. The greatest fight of all time for two rounds. $5! There he stands, friends! The greatest staff of all time! The management offers $5 for anyone that'll fight me and be on their feet at the end of two rounds! Do I hear a challenger? Those hamburgers certainly do smell good. Do I hear a challenger? That guy don't look so tough to me anyhow. That's what Custer said before the massacre. Who did he ever fight? Setting bull. I never heard of him. Who is the challenger who wants to fight? Dorilla Watson! Hey, you're looking at him, mister. Hey, wait a minute, Chip. Oh, I'll take that gorilla in the ring and I'll make a monkey at him. Oh, come on, Aunt Dorothy. There's an easy five dollars. Okay, oh, five dollars. Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars. One quarter of a dollar, everybody. One ticket. Uh, uh, you know, that's good. 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 Come and get him with our hot, 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 hot. Nice and hot. Nice and juicy and hot. Ten cents. Now give me a hamburger, my man. Ah, right, one hamburger. You better make it two. Two? Okay. Nice, juicy, hot hamburgers. Twenty-five cents. One quarter of a dollar. Come on, everybody. Well, here's the five, all right. You certainly earned it. I sure ran backwards those two rounds. <laughs> I thought you were on a bicycle. Mm. Come and get him, Alan. Come and get him. Come on. Ten cents. Hey, plenty of onions on mine, chowderhead. Um, I'll do the same for you sometime. Forget it, buddy. We're set for three squares for the next couple of days. Well, say, why did you tell me you were a fighter? You ever picked up that footwork on the dance floor? No, but that's where I picked up that dame I quit the racket for. She didn't like fighting, so we never got married. You know, it's too bad a guy can't sock a dame in the nose unless he's married to her. What's a fighter like you doing around here anyway? Isn't there more money in the ring these days than the price of a hamburger? Well, you don't see me walking around on my heels and talking to myself, do you? No, sir. 
Here's one baby that got out of the racket while he's still young and healthy. Come on, Mug, will you get those things going there? I'm hungry. Five hamburgers, sir. Have a buck. I've been robbed. Yeah? Oh, well, that's the kind of a place this is. A man can't turn around without having his pockets picked. Come on, I've been handed that line by you just before. Come, come, my good man. And you had enough nerve to order five of them. Could I anticipate that some light fingers... Come on, wait a minute, wait a minute, buddy. That's okay, that's on me. Well, it's exceedingly kind of you, sir, and I appreciate well, it. Well, you can do the same for me sometime. You are truly a good Samaritan. What do you mean, Samaritan? But my folks are Dublin Irish, see? How about it? Oh, all right, here, take it out of it. Why, it's gone. And it was right here in this pocket. Look again. Why, I've been rolled. I've been rolled. Ah, why don't you pick up a new one? Oh, pipe down. Wait, lad, I saw him with that five bucks over the athletic show. Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! Here he is, folks. But I tell you, some guy around this joint just rolled me for five. It's the same old stall, Joe. All three of them. No, yeah. Nobody's gonna call me a liar. Come on, screw up. Don't do that. I don't like it. Oh. What do you want, Ryan? You've got a nerve. Well, you don't have to be so formal with me. Hey, what's the idea? Why, why, I guess we got in the wrong tent. Yeah, well, the convention's inside, but you buy your tickets out front. Yeah, so beat it. Yeah, the way you came in. Go on in, it's all right. Can we see all right? My eyes are working. Well, who sent for you, Bouncer? Not to bother you, but the cops are looking for three guys to start a fight. Well, this fight hasn't started yet. Say, can a lady change her clothes without an audience? Go on, scram. I don't see why that doesn't go for you, too. Nobody invited you in here. Yeah? Well, you gave those birds a break. How about me? Sure. Come around any time you got any cops on your trail, and I'll see what I can do. Same old stall, eh? You've been handed to me ever since you joined this outfit. I'm not stalling. I'm just putting you straight. I don't want any part of a guy like you, even if you are the cream of this classy outfit. Hey, hey, wait a minute. If you're so high hat, what are you doing around here? Doing my best to get out. Now listen, Ryan. I know why Doris Phillips left this show, and I know that she's washing dishes in a cheap cafeteria to keep her baby alive. Well, what's that got to do with me? Say, listen, kid, somebody's been handing you a line about me that's a lot of hooey. You're not going to fall for it, are you? Look here, I'm going to put you right.
see more of her. Uh, too bad the law won't allow it. The law wouldn't stop me from taking a crack at that crummy boyfriend of hers. With all the guys in the world, how can a dame fall for a mug like that? She didn't meet you first. I might have known where I'd find you. Hurry up, Ryan. You're late now. If you're gonna hang around here, why don't you move in? Give me a little more time, Porky. Maybe I will. Your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Today you look upon the most death-defying exhibition ever presented before any audience. The masked daredevil. Blindfolded, he will risk life and limb in a most spectacular exhibition of skill and courage. Diving from the extraordinary height of a hundred feet with but five feet of water between him and eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, the masked marvel. Just our luck to have him waiting for us out there right now. Well, that's why we're not taking a chance. Come on, we owe that girl a vote of thanks anyway. Back there with all those women? One dame's as safe as another. Yeah, but one's a lot safer than seven. Come on, Slug, come on. What's the matter? Haven't they seen enough for their money? They're friends of mine. Save the cute one for me. <laughs> Something you want? Well, on behalf of my friends and myself, I want to express my, uh, well, uh, anyhow, thanks. I guess you're entitled to an explanation. Oh, I knew the layout when you blew in. I was doing the ballyhoo out front when your fun started. Truly, my child, you're a good Samaritan. Samaritan? Why, she ain't a more foreigner than I am. Please, stay back. <laughs> Ain't that mug they just carried in there the monkey that tried to throw us out? That's right. I wouldn't have his job even if I had a parachute. Dead spring. Oh, I'll snap out of this in a couple of weeks. You'll be lucky to snap out of this in a couple of months. A couple of months? Yes. You're fortunate, young man, that you didn't break your neck. The sooner we get him to the hospital, the better. Cheerful guy, these sawbones. I see where we eat for a couple of months. What do you mean? All you have to do is take a dive. I'll go ten rounds with that gorilla any time. But not that. We need a cup of coffee. Hey, wait a minute. Not you. Me. You're nuts. It's the heat. What makes you think you can do that? Well, if you did all the amateur diving I had, you'd think it was time you cashed in on it. That's okay. This is different. Sure, we get paid for this. And we'll eat. Well, there's something to be said for that. It's too bad, Ryan, but I guess we have to take the breaks like they come. Yeah? Well, this wasn't exactly the kind of break I was looking for. At least you can be thankful it's not worse. Do you care? Of course. I'll take you up on that when I come back. Yeah, if you'd kept your mind on your work, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Maybe your business won't be so good with me out of the show. Come on, people, get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Right in there. Mr. Owen? Now what? Won't you be needing a new high diver? What about it? I met. Think you can do it? Sure. Why don't I go on? Go on the next show. Come over to my office in a few minutes. Come on. Well, I hope your first appearance ain't your last. Just a minute. You didn't waste much time easing yourself into my job, did you? Well, I'm sorry, old man. I... Sure. Sorry I didn't break my neck. Then you'd been setting my spot for good. 
That ain't such a spot. Oh, you'll be back on your feet in no time. I'll have a lot of lost time to make up when I get back. Keep it open for me. I have to make my change now, Jim. So long and good luck. Yo, fella. You're moving into my job for a while. But that's all you're moving into. Got it? Come on, Doc. Shove off. That guy's tough luck is a break for her anyhow. <laughs> she won't get lonesome with me around. Son, when you've known women as long as I have, <laughs> He's been holding out on us. What did a woman ever do to you? The worst thing a woman can do to a man. She married me. <laughs> you know I like him better all the time. Well, when do you suppose they open up the chow tent around here? <laughs> Come and get it, boy. <laughs> this time it's on me. <laughs> it's a good thing he ain't got a Nova coat. <laughs> what a fell. Hey! Why, that's my five. You. I was sitting right next to you when I missed it. Well, what a strange coincidence. That's just when I found it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the masked daredevil. I got my fingers crossed. Can you see all right, kid? Perfect. Okay, come on, let's go. The most death defying exhibition ever presented before any audience. Ladies and gents, gentlemen, in this corner, pardon me, is going to defy death. I want to say, folks, that this is one of the greatest exhibi <coughs> exhibitions ever presented before any audience. And it's going to be a knockout. Now watch him, folks, while he mounts the ladder. I want you to get back about 20 feet. So that when he dives in the tank here, the water comes out and the flap will splash over and you get your little feet wet. And I want you to be very careful of these guy wires you see all around the tank. One little slip and that man would plunge to his death. I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the greatest attraction ever presented in any carnival. This man dives 100 feet into a tank, 10 feet wide and four and a half feet deep. Now, I want you to keep your eye on the man. Watch him. You all the tug guy wires all right, boys? Okay. Are you ready up there, Tom? Okay. There he goes, folks. that way before a fight. You pass. Look, I've got another job for you. Just when I'm getting used to this one. This won't keep you busy. You see, I've got a girl who falls out of bed. What do you want me to do about it? Oh, you mean she falls out of bed three shots for a dime? I want you to work over there between the high dives. That won't be work. It'll be a pleasure. Thanks, Mr. Owen. Right now, I got a date with some ham and eggs. This is your first time out with the show, isn't it? Yes, I didn't know what I was missing. I did the first time I saw you. Go on, you're doing fine. Listen, sister, you and I are going to get along. 
I got a hunch it was right in the cards, but things have turned out this way. A nice fellow like you wouldn't try to cold deck our little Nell, would you? This is on the level. How about meeting you tonight at the show? Maybe a little ride somewhere? Thanks, but I've done my walking exercise for the day. Honest, though, my Uncle Bill lives in this town, and I've got to keep the night open for him. Yeah? I'll tell you what you do. Shake him, and I'll meet you afterwards, huh? Don't count on it. Your little boy, madam? Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh. Here we are. There we are. There's a nice spare rib for you. Now then, you eat that, and you'll grow up into a nice, big, strong man. Listen, you. Crack that again, I'll climb your frame and whittle you down to my size. See? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you losing weight, Miss Holland? Yes, but don't tell Mr. Owens, because I was five pounds underweight last week. It really has me worried. Try dieting. More starches will put your figure where it belongs. I'll take ham and eggs. Spare rib. Ham and eggs. Uh, but, madam, I... And don't call me madam. You mean to stand there and tell me that's the best you could do? Spare ribs? Let me see your palm. I thought so. You have a short lifeline, my good man. It's going to be a lot shorter if you don't bring me ham and eggs. Well, this line here shows if you don't take my spare rib, I'm going to lose my job. I tell you, I'll take spare ribs. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> But ain't a small world after all. Sit down, gorilla, and we'll kiss and make up. And it's a good thing for you that I'm working here, too, because I was coming around to pick up another five spot from your senior. You what? Oh, sit down, sit down. Ain't we one big happy family yet? What do you do, ride the bicycle in the motodrome? <laughs> the motodrome wasn't fast enough for me, buddy. Well, look who's here. Where have I seen your face before? Don't you remember? You were in bed. Listen, you fresh mug, another crack like that, and I'll come over there after you. Trixie, where were you last night? Wait a minute, mug. Back to your corner. Hey, ain't you the cute little blonde that falls out of that bed on the midway? Now I remember you. <laughs> Dames never forget me. And you better be nice to me, too, because you're going to see a whole lot of me from now on. I've seen enough. You ain't seen anything yet. <laughs> no, sir, folks, you haven't seen anything yet till you see the little lady fall out of bed. What's that? She's no lady. <laughs> I ought to know. Three shots for a dime, boys, and make a little hit with a little lady. Hiya, Belgium, Elvie. How am I doing, Mr. Owen? Oh, you get along all right. Either he quits rolling me out of that bed every time he takes a notion, or I quit. Well, I gotta give the customer some encouragement, don't I? Me and that bed have been drawing customers a long time before you showed up. Now, Trixie, what are you so sore about? About the middle of some place that's none of your business. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so rough on your sister. You see? You'll feel different about it in the morning. Yeah, I'll just begin to feel it. I'm sorry. Can't we be friends? Come on, give. I could be real nice to a fellow like you, if uh, you gave me a chance. Well, what about your pal, the gorilla? Well, I could tell him I'm going to be busy tonight, if uh, you really want me to. Are you there, Trixie? That's all right, pal. I'll be right out. What did you say you were going to tell him? Oh, yeah. You were going to be busy tonight. Oh, yeah? Well, so am I. So long. I'll be seeing you. So said, as I dropped to my knees in the wet gravel beside the body, my hasty examination to close the bullet hole at the hairline of the right temple, the slug had passed through the small black hat the woman had been wearing. TV orders are nothing about the scene to be touched. What's been holding up your beauty sleep? My dear boy, I've been out commuting with the stars. It was a balmy night. So are you. I saw you heading for that fortune teller dame a couple of hours ago. Madame Zandra gave me a reading. <laughs> Bedtime stories, huh? 
It's about time she sent you home. What'd she tell you? That a woman's coming into my life. <laughs> You're falling for that bunk. No, you can't change your destiny, my boy. No? No. It's right there. Where? Right there. I thought you had enough of dames. Well, somehow Madame Zandra seems different. A balmy night. Are you asleep, Dick? Porky's? This po uh, well, goodness gracious me. And here I've been wondering who it belonged to. I guess I uh, forgot to tell you that I picked it up. I see you did. Yeah. There it was right at my feet. Weren't we lucky to find it? Were we lucky that I found it? What are you trying to do? Get us bounced right off of this lot? Are you trying to insinuate that I... I, I just... No, <laughs> no. Nothing like that. I'm telling you. You stick to that donuts from now on. Don't you appreciate a nice bed like we got here? The bed's all right. All right. But the sheets are so new and so slippery. Oh, slippery. Well, that's too bad. I'll have them put some ashes on your side. Good night, Tom. So soon? The night's not very old, you know. What more can one ask of one evening? You might ask me to come in for a while. Is that what you expected when I went out with you? I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. I didn't really think... Yes, you did. The first day I met you, Ryan let you think that... he was wrong. I was hoping that you wouldn't be. I'm sorry you had to spoil it, Tom. I didn't want to spoil it. Good night, Tom. Tom. You're great. You're kind of nice yourself. Good night. Good night. Your home, Ronnie? Aren't you? I wouldn't be if I was her uncle. We've got that girl all wrong, Dick. And you're falling for that same old stall. Oh, roll over and go to sleep, will you? Well, anyhow, pleasant dream. <laughs> found this place. It sort of makes you feel like a human being for a change, to get away from a mess tent. That's what I've been thinking about the past few weeks. I mean, about getting away for good. I don't blame you. When does it happen? Whenever you'll say the word. You don't think I'd go without you, do you, Penny? Every time I watch your act, it's getting so that I hate every man that's looking at you. You know, you're too fine for that sort of thing. You're gonna let me take you out of it. This way, please. What happened? Did you mean? Well, there's Tom. Tom Warren. What? 
<laughs> Tom, where in the oh. world have you been? Well, so we good to see you. Certainly giving you up for dead. Oh, so good well. to see you. Seems ages. Of course, you look much younger, Laura. Thank you. Miss Lee. Porter, Miss Fairbank, Paul. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Lee? Then you mean when? <laughs> yes, when we thought he was a friend of ours. You've no idea, Miss Lee. He simply walked out on us. Well, at least you might keep in touch with a fellow once in a while. When did you get in? Just this morning. I called you up today. Well, I'm simply dying to know what you've been doing with yourself. Oh, just, uh, just traveling around one place or another. Well, you're just in time. There's a carnival in town. And it's on the program for tonight. I think they're lots of fun, don't you, Miss Lee? You know. Red lemonade and merry-go-rounds and all sorts of ridiculous people. <laughs> what you can see in a lot of freaks and Ferris wheels is beyond me. Wait until Carl gets you on a Ferris wheel. You've no idea. <laughs> 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 well, anyhow, you and Miss Lee have simply got to join us. And then we'll all get together later at my place and give the prodigal a real oh, homecoming. Oh, yeah, yeah, Perhaps later. Right now, I have to get Miss Lee to an appointment. We just have time to make it. I'm also glad to meet all of you. See you later. Bye. Well, goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> well, where do you suppose she came from? Well, she's rather pretty, I think. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. I let you get away with that out there because of the others. But you've got to tell me what all this mystery is about. Step over to the carnival, Carl. See the local boy make good. Well, what does he mean? The masked daredevil. The great free attraction of Owen's combined shows. That's me. Well, why on earth did you do that? Didn't you ever want to run away and join a circus when you were a kid? Of course. Well, so did I. I never got around to it before. Marvelous, but you might have let me in on it, too. I need a vacation myself. Well, the prodigal picked the proper time to come home. Things are beginning to pick up. I know a spot where you can pick up 5,000 a year right now. I'll talk about it later, Carl. We really got to run now. But I must see you again. Certainly. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's about all there is to tell. I've never been a sponger before, so when my bankroll took wings, I didn't wait around for any of my friends to offer me charity jobs. I found it wasn't so easy to get the other kind, especially when I'd never had to work for a living before. I was right, wasn't I? You don't find their kind around a mess tent. I had the hunch you didn't belong around here. Neither do you. That's why you're going to check right out of it with me now. It sounds good, Tom, but it wouldn't work. What wouldn't? Where would I get off with your crowd? I don't talk the way they do. I don't even think the way they do. Don't you suppose they'd find that out? Of all the rot. You know it's true. You were ashamed of yourself to let them know who I am. Well, I don't blame you for that. How would you feel once they did find out? Then you began to see that you'd made a mistake. You haven't any right to talk that way. You're worth all of them put together. Would they think so? Better run along now, Tom. I've got to change. Now, look. You're going to marry me. You're going to forget all these silly ideas. It may take a little time, but that's all right, too. I've got 12 weeks before this show closes. One, two, three, four. One, two. No, that's nothing like it. The trouble with you, you got two left feet. When did you get to be George White? George White? Why, I taught him everything he ever knew. Well, what am I doing wrong? I told you 47 times. It's one, two, three, four, and then turn over. Now, come on, let's try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's fine. Now I'll tell you what you do. You keep on doing it, and I'll be back in an hour. Hey, listen, Michael, will you? On your way, Taylor. Oh, listen, Michael. Hey, Michael, come here. Michael. Well, I've used every argument I can think of to try and make you be sensible. This is no place for you. You're nuts. Turn down a job that'll pay you five grand a year. In one year? Maybe later on, Carl. Yes, but what reason? The best in the world. Well, suppose we have a chat about that later on. Right now, I'm afraid that it's time that I... Well, that's funny. What is? My watch. 
Well, they work fast around here, don't they? By the way, Harry, do you suppose that could possibly be Carl's watch that you uh, found? Why, gosh. Oh, yes, that's it. Well, well, isn't that a strange coincidence? Thanks very much. Isn't it lucky I found it? He's just one of those good Samaritans. Well, see you later, Carl. Yes, as soon as I can get away from Laura and the others. They're out there somewhere now. Well, I, I tried to talk them out of coming down here, but you know Laura. See you again. Sure. What? What am I them? By the way, I heard that the Ringling Brothers lost a couple of elephants the other day. Do you know anything about it? If you're insinuating for one minute that... Fortune told. Well, come along up and see if it all comes true. No. <laughs> Not a come chance. Up. We're going to find the rest oh, of the gang. Come but, Tom, my boy, $5,000 doesn't grow on trees. But there's something bigger in life than that. Sure, 10000 And no little wren in the world is worth shooting that for. Cut it out, Dick. Okay, pal. I didn't know you felt that way about her. Well, I do. She won't have me. You mean to say that she has declined the honor exactly. of... Exactly. The dame's nuts! Dolly! Hey. Dolly! Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, the show about the star are the famous cosmopolitan dancing girls. As two girls, they will host the paragon of Cameron Cooperton, the glorified girls of the old combined show. Oh, Carl, Carl, now I know why you've lost interest. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mother had only taught me how to do that. <laughs> they sing, they dance. They're awful. That's the sound we're watching on the inside for the fourth of the What you see here is not what you'll see on the inside. My boy, when you've known women as long as I have, you'll begin to realize that you don't know them at all. And that goes for you, too. Say, even a smart guy can be wrong once in a while. You know, Tom... I think that Penny must have fell for you on the level. But she just happened to be one dame in a hundred. You bet you wouldn't see that Trixie dame turning me down if I asked her to marry me. Which I ain't. Let's go, Tom! Here we are! The show starts right away! A four star! That's the box over here! Come on, let's get out of here. You've had enough of this madhouse. No, no, I can't go until I've seen everything. Oh, everybody! Yes, sir! And when I mean dance, they dance! Now listen, honey, don't get nervous. Everything's gonna be okay. What do you mean, me get nervous, say? I'll be all right. You watch out for yourself. Well, you're getting swell-headed already and you haven't even been on the stage. Listen, didn't I put this act on? Yeah, but it'll take me to put it over. You and your whole family couldn't put this act over without me. Hey, there's our music. Then put this over good, ain't we, kid? I'm with you, baby. Okay, the you can quit now. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. The last time I appeared before you, Mitch, I did an act with a trained duck. But times got so tough and I laid off so long that I finally ate my duck and now I'm a master of ceremonies. I want to say, folks, we have over 50,000 master of ceremonies. <laughs> and if you took all us master of ceremonies, and you laid us end to end. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I do a high class act. Everything in my act is high class stuff. It seems to me by the moon I see. There's land on the starboard prow. To the oars, mates. To the oars. What's that? What the hallelujah is going on here? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were my husband. Well, thank goodness, baby, I'm not your William to tell. Well, girls will make mistakes. To lose. Wait a minute there, shorty. Don't you know you can't walk out here on the tarpaulin like that and shoot people around? Why, if you'd have killed me, you'd have been electrocuted. I don't care. You mean to say, Nell, you don't care if they electrocute you? Well, I wouldn't care as long as they didn't kill me. You got me, partner, you got me. Take that knife out of my back, will you, Jake? What's your name, anyway? Trixita. What's your last name? Trixita. <laughs> I want to say, folks, that we do a high-class act. Everything in Iraq is high-class stuff. What's your middle name? Trixita. Do you mind if I call you Trixita? You see, that's a good old Spanish name. I know, because I have Spanish blood in me. By your father? No, by transfusion. 
Do you mind if I take that shotgun and put it away? <laughs> Catch it. Tell me, what do you do on the stage? Do you sing? Sure, I'm a mezzo soprano. A mezzo who? Soprano. <laughs> I know you're a mess of something. Let's dance, Professor. <laughs> Yes, I believe it is. That must be. Can't you see, Tom? It'll never work. You can't go on living this sort of life forever, and you know it. I couldn't go on without her, but you don't know what she means to me, Carl. Of course, I understand, old man, but well, do you think it'll make her happy? If you mean that just because she came from a carnival, my friends wouldn't accept her as my wife. Oh, Tom. I'm perfectly satisfied the way things are. Yes, but how long could you go on being satisfied? I'd rather not discuss it, if you don't mind. Well, what'll I tell the gang? Nothing. I'll see them before the show leaves. You're a good scout, Carl. I'm sorry you think I'm letting you down. Miss Lee, may I come in? Yes. Thanks for being such a great guy. But you didn't have to bring them down here. I knew the payoff the minute I met all of you. Well, I tried to stop them from coming here. Please believe that. And that isn't what you came in to tell me. <laughs> you make it rather difficult. Do you think you and your friends are making it any easier for me? I turned him down, didn't I? What more do you want? What's it to you anyway? Well, not as much as it should be to you if he really means anything to you. I'm not good enough for him. Is that what you think? Oh, not at all. You're fine, just as Tom said you were, or he couldn't be so terribly in love with you. The only thing is, you must realize what this is going to mean to him if you let him go on like this. 
throwing away everything that he's always had out of life. But suppose I can make him happy. Then what right have you got to interfere? No right at all. Except that I know that it won't mean happiness for either of you in the long run. Isn't it better to have the break come now than have it come later when it's going to hurt you both more? But if he's made up his mind to stay, what more can I do about it? Frankly, I don't know. The main thing is, do you want to? You win. You needn't worry about it anymore. You make me feel very small. Oh, don't let that worry you. I'm not doing it on your account. Anything else you want? You are fine. Porky. Hello, kid. Can I come up? Sure, come on up. What's on your mind? Better get yourself a new high diver, Porky. You're going to need one. Yeah? Didn't you get a wire from Ryan? I had one this morning. He's waiting to hear about coming back in the show, isn't he? If that's all that's worrying I'm not going to throw Tom out of his job. But you've got to. What is on your mind? Look, Porky, if I tell you something, will you keep it quiet? Yes. And you'll promise to do something for me? Porky, you've just got to. I'm listening. Let's have it. know what I'm talking about. There's somebody else going to be mighty glad you're back with us again, Ryan. Yeah? How is she? Well, not just the same since you've been away. Yeah, I knew it was a stall she was giving me all the time. Who could fool a smart guy like you? Hey, listen, Owens. Has she said anything to you about me? Said anything? Ryan, you'd never guess. You don't have to tell me, Owens. I've had that dame's number from the start. Better hurry up. You're going on in 15 minutes. Okay. All right, tell us one down and hook me to be fit that time. Look out there, it went Listen, right Listen, partner, you. all you got to do is keep your mind on the ball. Right, huh? Like this, look. Again, eh? Say, what did she ever do for business before you turned up? You ought to know enough about it by now to go on the racket yourself. The palm, my boy, is not a matter for jest. It sees everything. Yeah, you're certainly as quicker than the eye. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Is that yours? Jim. I couldn't believe it when they tell me you were here. Glad to see me, eh? Glad isn't the half of it. Oh. Come on in. What does it matter now that you're back? Then how about making up for some of that lost time? You're kind of in the habit of busting into places, ain't you, fellow? I should have believed you when you told me I'd find out it was a mistake. I just didn't realize that you were trying to let me down easy. Uh, don't get your feelings hurt, fella. 
You can't blame the little woman for being lonesome while the old master was away. <laughs> I wish you both luck. Thanks, fella. And the next time, knock before you bust in. Boy, you sure do take chances. Well, I'm doing all right so far, don't you think? Yeah. Hey, Tom! Hey, Tom! I wonder what's burning him up. I don't know. He's about due to go on. Sure. That's the last we'll see of him, eh, baby? You're very clever, aren't you, Ryan? You know all about women, don't you? I'm the guy that wrote the book. The very first day that boy came on the slot, you went out of your way to let him think that, that I belonged to you. You didn't make it very easy for me then, but you did make it easy for me just now. Made it easy for him to believe the things that I wanted him to believe because I loved him enough to send him away. And all the time I was using you, get it? Using you! And I fell for That's it. That's just how clever you are. All right. Now we'll finish what you started. Sock. I've been saving that firm ever since the first time I met him. Is he all, all right? He would have been if he hadn't led with his chin. Can I do anything? Beat it, kid. We'll take care of it. How about a shower? That'll bring him to. Snap out of it. You'll never snap out of this. I'll go and find Tom. Is Porky in there? He's going on a lot somewhere. You tell him I want to see him. Something's happened. Yeah, plenty. You don't know what I mean. Come on. Tom's on a warpath, Porky. Better tell Ryan to hurry up. He's going on. I hit him. He fell. He hit his head. All right. Just a minute. Be out in a minute. Is Dick in there? Yeah. yeah. Hurry up, Dick, or you'll have pork in your hair. Come on, let's go. What are you waiting for? ever presented before any audience. The masked daredevil. He is about to risk his life in one of the most spectacular exhibitions of skill and courage. Now, folks, I want you to keep your eyes on the ladder as he mounts. And be very careful of those guy ropes, because one little slip and he might plunge to instant death. I want you to see this man here. He's making the greatest dive that you've ever seen in your life. He dives 100 feet into a tank 10 feet wide and four and a half feet deep. You better get back about 20 feet so that when the water plunges out of this tank here, you won't get your feet wet.
Wines did it again. He's out cold. All right, I'll get a doctor. Stay back, will you? I'm seriously hurt. Stand back, please. All right, then you take him. All right. All right, all right. All right. Now, please. I ask, will you please stand? No. Come on, we gotta work fast. Hand me those pants. Hurt, can I say any more to you? Please go back on the Now, please don't crowd around. Then no one can come in here. I'm Dr. Wallace. Right in here, please. Take this out. Concussion, apparently. Must have killed him instantly. Well, it's too bad. But it's the game. Looks like rain. Well, that'd be good for the crops. I won't be with you boys in the next jump. We'll be missing you. Won't we, Harry? Yeah. So will Penny. That's all over. Tom, did it ever occur to you that when a woman loves a man, she'd do anything for him? But Penny does. He's just the kind that would. Son? She did just that this afternoon. Cut a light, Harry. Hey! Isn't it lucky that I found it? Interesting hand, madam. Fifty cents, please. Oh, I do hope it all comes true. The palm never lies. Well, uh, goodbye, Madam Zandra, and thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Harry? Vivian, you don't have to go home so early. I guess we do. Bill has to get up early. Oh, I'm sorry. Penny, you're a darling. So are you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bill. Good night, Tom. I'll be See you later. Good night, Penny. Had a perfectly lovely time. Don't forget Thursday. No, indeed I won't. Good night. Good night. See you soon. Good, Good night, night, Carl. Good, Good night, kid. Good night, Carl. Good night, Tom. What a perfect treasure Tom's wife is. What did you say her name was before she was married? Miss Lee, I believe. Really? You don't suppose she's one of the leaves of Virginia? I shouldn't be surprised. 